Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a special Palm Sunday sermon broadcast brought to you by Spirit of God Christian Church. We pray that you're all doing well and staying safe. We thank you for tuning in, and if you're new to this broadcast, we pray that it blesses you. Don't forget to share this broadcast with others so they can be blessed by it too. Now, as we enter into our service, let's prepare for corporate prayer with Deacon Derek Madison. And after that, we'll hear a word from the Lord through our pastor, Randall Knighton. Also, stay tuned for a special lesson presentation from the youth ministry. Well, good morning and welcome to Corporate Prayer at Spirit of God Christian Church. I'm going to read a quick scripture before we go into corporate prayer. And it's John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6. And I'm going to read from the New King James Version. And it says this, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So that's what we're going to pray around today. As this is a time where people are looking for answers, we know that Jesus is the answer. He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the light. So let's go together in corporate prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for this day. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence. Father, while we may be spread apart in our homes or different places. Father, we just thank you that we have the opportunity to come into your holy presence because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that as the world is seeking answers, Father, we know that we have the answer, that Jesus Christ is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Father, we just thank you that as we take this time, Father, to draw closer to each other, Father, that we'll take this time to draw closer to you. Father, we just ask that you will look on this service on today. Father, we pray over the word. We ask that you will anoint the word, that you will anoint the speaker, that you will anoint the hearers, that you will anoint the listeners. Father, that we'll be doers of your word. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to get into your holy presence. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we've had over this week to spend time with our families. Father, to spend time with our loved ones. But Father, most of all, to spend time with you. Father, we thank you that on this week, Father, you've shown us ways that we can reflect on how we can be better for you. Father, on this week, you've shown us a new level in you. Father, on this week, you've shown us, Father, di different things that we can do to be better for the body of Christ. So Father, we thank you for that. Father, we pray for those that are ill in their bodies. Father, we thank you because you sent your word to heal and to deliver. So Father, we thank you for healing taking place in the lives of your people. Father, we thank you that on today, if there are any that are just feeling under it, Father, that on this day we can make the exchange. Father, we can put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Father, that on this day, we can get into your word and we can hear clearer from you. Father, that there will be answers to the things that are perplexing us. Father, that on this day you will pour out your spirit just as you've promised. Father, that on this day we'll hear from heaven. For Father, we need a word from you. And Father, we believe that there will be a word that will be delivered mightily to your people. Father, we pray over marriages today. Father, we believe you for healing of marriages. Father, we pray over relationships. We thank you, Father, for relationships being healed and being mended. Father, we pray over our children who are at home, Father, learning. Father, we pray for their concentration. Father, we pray for the grace of, our, of the parents. 
Father, we just thank you because you are working and moving during this time. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together with people of like precious faith. Father, we just honor you for what you will do today. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, I'm Pastor Randall Knight and pastor of Spirit of God Christian Church. And it's Palm Sunday. It's the day that Jesus makes his triumphal entry that we celebrate the making of triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And what a marvelous day it is in the history and the life of Christianity. But today I just wanna take a moment and just really just say to each and every person, especially the members of Spirit of God Christian Church who are tuned in and joined in with us. And I know we have not been able to meet now for three weeks, we haven't met since March the 15th, and it looks like it's going to be a lot longer before we're able to meet due to coronavirus. But I just want to let each and every one of my members know as the pastor spirit of God, I miss you all. I thank God for you. I love you. And I just cannot wait until we can get together and meet again and be able to congregate and truly pass the love the way the spirit of God passes the love. But in the meantime, we'll do that through the airways and through prayer. So I just want you to know that I miss you and that I love you, but I'm so glad that you've been tuning in to the broadcast. And I want to give a special thanks to our media team who does a magnificent job. And as you can even see today, they've taken this thing up to a whole nother level. And so we're grateful for the servants who serve so faithfully at Spirit of God Christian Church. And so also, I want to just thank you too, those of you, uh, whether you're a member or not, who have been giving online and supporting the ministry uh, during our time of being away, if you will, from being able to meet and congregate with one another. We've been able to do some really good things in our communities and help uh, some other ministries as well who are doing things like feeding some of the children who don't have food to eat during the school, uh, being that school is out and during the week and things of that nature. So number one, we ask that you continue to pray. We ask that you continue to pray and ask the Lord what it is that you should do to support the ministry. And we always we want to thank you in advance for your support and all that you have done through online giving and some of those things like that as well. So we're going to continue to do the work of the Lord. It doesn't matter if we can't meet, but, but the work of the Lord will go on because the God we serve does not stop. So today, this Palm Sunday, let's dive into the word and see what the Lord has to say for all of us. A couple of scriptures we're going to read first, and then we'll dive right into um, today why we celebrate so greatly this Palm Sunday. But more importantly, what is the word of the Lord right now? Zechariah 9 and 9 in New King James Version says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. And then we find in John chapter 1, verse 23, speaking of John the Baptist, he says, He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. And then finally, our focal scripture today in John chapter 12, verses 12 through 13, in the King James Version says it this way, on the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. So today for a message, we want to just kind of focus in on these words, make a way for the way maker. Just make a way for the way maker. To all of those saints and who are a part of my life and in part of my upbringing and growing in from my mother and father and to grandparents and to siblings as well, who we would often hear say when times is growing up as a, as a boy who was in church is that Christ was a way maker. And that is for sure. And even as a child, I did not quite understand what that meant. But as I grew older, I realized he truly does make a way. But what we celebrate today on Palm Sunday is about the fact that they were making a way for the way maker, that here they were celebrating, if you will, the, the, the king of kings coming in on a donkey. I find it very interesting that we know that at his return, that Jesus Christ will be coming in on a white horse. But here it was him coming in now humble, lowly, riding in, understanding the work that had to be done. And what we learn from Christ, even in this, is a couple of things. Number one, one thing that's very important is that we learn the value of humility. For he was one who was humble. He was sinless, but yet was still humble. But we also learn that he was God in flesh because he accepted and received worship. 
because he did not denounce it. He did not say, no, don't worship me because I'm not God. No, when they worshiped him, he received that worship because he was fully human, but fully divine. So a couple of things I want to look at today in making ways that we understand of making a way for the way maker. We must understand a couple of things within ourselves. Truthfully, we should be making a way for the way maker in our lives. So one of the first things that they did was they had preparation for the king. And I found that this is very interesting in that it was a time where they made sure they were deliberate. They were intentional to prepare for the king coming in, doing the work that he had done, to, that he had been called to do. You know, um, I find this uh, really, really, really interesting. And it actually was very revealing that when many people heard about the coronavirus making its way to the United States of America, many people started to make great preparations. People went in and as you, many of you saw it and or experienced or even did it, many people went and stocked up on toilet paper and paper towels and all kinds of cleaning products. They, they, were, they were preparing for what was coming. Be, begin to stock up on food, checking the news, listening to the president, listening to the governors, listening to whether it was their county or city officials, because they were trying to be prepared for what was coming, along with the fact, as well as other medical things that they began to take place. People began to try to build up their immune systems and doing a lot of different things because they were making preparation for what was coming. That happened in a matter, really, of about 24, 48, 72 hours. People started making life changing, altering preparations for a virus that was coming. Jesus Christ over 2000 years ago made it very clear that when he rose that he was coming back and we know he's coming back. We know he's the Christ. We know that even his enemies couldn't find fault against him. And yet we act like we didn't believe him that he was coming back. In this world, what we've seen is a lack of preparation for the king coming. Here's what we need to understand and make sure that we know is that he is coming back, but we need to make preparation. Look at the lack of preparation of some of the things that have taken place. What we've said to the king, even though we know he's coming, we don't want you defining marriage for us. We don't want you being mentioned in our state or government assemblies through form of prayer. Anytime that somebody wants to pray or even offer Christ, even on the job, HR is called or there's a problem. We have said to the king, we know you're coming, but we didn't want you to come. But let's look at this now. With Corona, nobody didn't say, you know, we didn't want you to come. We just made preparations for your coming because we figured that it was inevitable. It had hit China. It had hit over in Great Britain. It had hit Italy. And now it was coming to the U.S. But Jesus is coming for sure. And now it is a time and a call to make proper preparation. And the first way that we prepare to make a way for the way maker is by going to the throne and asking for repentance. We need to go back and tell God, say, God is a society. We focused in on other things. We made idol gods of other things. We focused in on things that were not you. And now you do have our attention because now we can't watch sports like we used to. Now we can't go out and do what we used to do. Because of the fact that now we're all under quarantine, we're at a place now where we have to sit and begin to focus in on you. So here's my challenge right now to make a way for the way maker in your life. Make proper preparation for the inevitable because he is coming back and he is coming back for his people. So as they celebrated the coming of the king coming into Jerusalem to fulfill his work, we in our hearts and in our lives ought to be preparing right now for the king coming and entering into the world again to come and get those who are his. The second way that we have to begin to look at this making a way for the way maker is that understood that they had a processional for the king and understand that the palm branches represented a time of celebration. It was really more or less of a like a parade for the fact that here he was, the one that was promised in Zechariah, the one that John the Baptist stood out and told us was coming. He was here, but now he was going to fulfill his destiny and go to the cross for us. So there has to be a time of processional and there should be a celebration in your heart not only that he has come, but that he is coming back again. Whenever you look at the world in which we live, you know, 
as a human being living in this world and somebody who tries to stay in tune and informed, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in this world that sometimes you just sit back and you look and you say, now that's just some evil stuff going on. But you know where I find joy? I find joy and I keep my heart because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Keep my heart full of joy knowing and I keep a private and a personal processional in my heart and you should do the same that the king is going to come back again. And I, I want us to celebrate today knowing that this journey that we're focusing in on all the way to Jerusalem is nothing more than a precursor to his triumphant return back when Gabriel will sound the trumpet and the trumpet will sound loud and every eye will see him. But in your heart, when you get down, when you get discouraged, when you feel like there is no way, make sure you know that the way maker is coming. Make a way in your heart for him through the form of processional. Begin to celebrate that. And then there was praise for the king, for the king that they found during this time. I thought it was very interesting that in John's account of this piece, uh, the Pharisees said to him, Jesus, make your disciples be quiet. Jesus said, I'll tell you what, if they don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. But here's the thing about it. Don't you be ashamed to praise his name. Look at all that God has done for you. And let me say this, even in this coronavirus, there's still a whole lot to praise God for because this could have happened at a time that it was in the dead of winter where there was ice and snow. You wouldn't be able to go to the store. Maybe you wouldn't have power or some of the things you need. Even at the time that this has come, it is at a time where we are still blessed with utilities, the ability to get food and the ability to even manage a quarantine. Look at God. God still got our attention, but made sure we were good even in the midst of it. There is, should be praise for the king. And here's what has happened too. In lack of preparation, there's been lack of praise. We act like we want to give credit and glory to someone or something else that should go to God. Make no mistake, we shouldn't be ashamed to praise him. The beauty of those who stood by with their palm branches and said, Hosanna, Hosanna, here comes the king. It didn't matter the persecution that they would suffer. It didn't matter the things that they might have to endure from even the synagogue or even people that they knew. They were willing to praise him nonetheless. Is there a rock with your name on it? Or did God not have to do that because he knows you're a praiser? and that he gets praise from you, and that he never would have to inscript your name on a rock, but your name is written in Lamb's Book of Life. Praise God, be unashamed to do it. Don't let a rock cry out for you. But then to make a way for the way maker, yes, we gotta make proper preparation. We gotta get to the throne and ask for forgiveness. We need to seek repentance and then prepare for him coming better than we did the coronavirus. We need to have a processional uh, of celebration in our hearts that he's going to fulfill his assignment just as he said before, just as he did before, he shall return. But then there must be praise for the king. We can't sit on our praise even in this time. Every day you wake up, you ought to praise the Lord that you're alive again and he's still got work for you to do, that you have an opportunity. Many of you have been able to work from home, praise the Lord. Many of you have had, even though you, uh, your jobs might have had to shut down just for a moment, God has still provided for you. You ought to still praise him. But then we ought to make a way for the way maker. And this is really the major way we do this privately and that's in prayer. This is about that intimate connection. Oh, prayer closets ought to be full right now. Because again, we, as believers ought to be praying, connecting with God each and every day, letting God know how appreciative we are of him, but more importantly, how much we need him at this time. Also, we ought to be thanking God that while he could have wiped us all out with a pestilence or a plague, that God has still had mercy. Let's take some time to connect with him as his people. Let's make sure that on this Palm Sunday, we're in a celebratory mode because I have a personal relationship with the lover of my soul. Let's make sure that we take time to intimately connect with him. You know, um, it's interesting because I'm going to be real interested to listen um, to some of the statistics that will come out during the times of intimacy. I know that many of you right now, intimacy is not really something that you're really trying to trying to hear about because you got kids at home. And y'all have gotten a little closer than maybe you wanted to with school being out. 
I know it gets tough sometimes because they're bottled in the house with you. you some of you got spouses at home and trust me, I understand. Sometimes you want a little distance in the work day just to have some thoughts to yourself, have a moment to yourself. So there's a whole lot of intimacy right now that privately I know you're not necessarily celebrating. But let me help you with that. God will make a way so you can navigate everybody being at home. Go to the throne of grace and prayer. Go to the throne. Make sure that you're talking to God during this time. Make sure you're listening to God during this time so God can help navigate your health as well as your life. Make sure that during this time you're taking advantage of this alone time that you and God have. Because we won't be able to stand before him and say, God, well, I never did have any time. God said, no, I remember in 2020, round about March 15th or so, um, a lot of things started shutting down and you could have spent some time with me. Make sure you spend some time with God. And then not only praying God, but listen, here's the thing to make a way for the way maker. You have to stand in faith on the promises of God. You know, I know a lot of pastors have come out and I, God bless everyone who proclaims the name of Jesus Christ, who have come out and tried to calm the fears of people. For God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and of a sound mind that he did give us. Fear comes from the enemy, but faith is in Jesus Christ. And so I want you to understand that you got to trust the promises of the king. That's one of the reasons why I'm making preparation for him, because he promised me he's coming back. It's one of the reasons why I have a processional in my heart every day, because I know how much he loves me. And I know he's going to bring everything to completion in me because he promised me that. I know that I'm not alone. That's why I praise him. I look at what he does for me. That's why I praise the king. And I pray to him because I know he'll hear me and in no wise cast me out. So I stand on his promises, his past promises, his present promises, and his future promises. I know that he is going to be there with me and for me. But more importantly, let's make this way with the Waymaker. Listen, he's going to make a way in that because I know he promised me that he would be with me. He promised me that he would guide me and lead me as long as I would follow his guidance and his lead. Right now, we have a great opportunity to stand on the promises of Jesus Christ. That not only did he promise to go to the cross, to destroy that temple and raise in three days, he did that, but he promised to come back for his people. But in the meantime, he promised to give us assignments and to bless us in all that we do. Let's not miss this opportunity on this Palm Sunday to celebrate and say with others, Hosanna in the highest, because the king not only has come, but the king is coming. I want you to know that no matter what you're facing in your life, Jesus Christ can make you a way out of it. Jesus Christ has made a way to make sure that you're protected and that you're covered, even to the point that you can contact and connect with him. So if you're in this place, if you're listening right now to where you can hear the Lord calling on you, tapping on your shoulder, you know that here's the way that you make a way is you got to get to the way maker. What you know is that you haven't made proper preparation. You know that there's not a processional continuing going in your heart. There are some days you're down and the joy of the Lord should be there. And you should be celebrating the goodness of the Lord. There are some days that your praise just is not at the level that it should be. And there are some times you're not praying like you should. But I want you to understand, here's the promise of God that you can join in and that you can participate in that will change your eternal destiny. He wants to be in a personal relationship with you for all eternity. All you got to do is give your life over to him. And so I challenge you right now in Jesus name. If there is one who is listening, one who is watching, who has not had the opportunity, here's your opportunity to meet the way maker. He's made a way to you by this broadcast right now. And what he's saying to you is, I want you. I want your heart and I want your life. And if you're willing to give it to me, I'll take it and I'll make it brand new. So let's just take a moment and pray for those right now whom God has touched and whose hearts are being moved. And even those of us who had to acknowledge that we have not made proper preparations like we should for the way maker to make a way in our lives. Right now, let's pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, it is our prayer that whomever is listening, Lord, whose heart desires to be changed, who wants God to be ready when you come. God, this is their way of making preparation for the inevitable coming. This is their way, God, as others have made ways, God, for a virus that is coming. This is their way, God. They're saying right now, God, I'm listening to you. I hear you, Lord. Father, receive me just as I am. 
Father, right now in Jesus' name, you receive them, God, as they confess you as their Lord and their Savior. And Father, we pray for all of us as believers in you. Father, forgive us of our sin. Father, some things we've just allowed to go by. We haven't checked some things in our lives, some things around us, God, that weren't like you. God, we, we acted as if you weren't coming back and we didn't make proper preparations. But God, you have our attention now. And Father, just as you caught the attention of those who saw you coming in, riding in on a donkey, saying, Hosanna in the highest. Here he is, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Let me celebrate and worship him. Father, today we celebrate and worship you as we start off this holy week. And we pray, God, right now in the name of Jesus, our focus will stay on you and we will stay in faith and not walk in fear. That we will trust you, especially in these times. But even when these times are over, we'll trust you all the more. Father, have mercy upon us. Bless this broadcast. And Father, bless the youth ministry that shall come now and bring forth a great word to our young people as well as our adults. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now please, whatever you do right now, do not touch the remote, don't touch your device. I need for you, because I'm excited about what our youth ministry has in store for both our smaller kids as well as our teens. So right now, let's go and listen and hear from our youth coordinator, Chelsea Sierra, and then from Elder Thompson for our teens. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Good morning, kids. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Chelsea Sierra. For the children who do know me, please know Miss Chelsea misses you all and pray that I see you all soon. Today is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday gets his name because many Christians celebrate today because on this Sunday before Easter, Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey. Many people wave palm leaves simply as a way of praising him. The people laid down clothing for the donkey to walk on as a way of honoring him. Imagine a huge parade. Well, that's kind of what his interest was like. And why was there palm branches at this parade? Well, during these times, palm branches symbolized riches, goodness, and victory. They were often designed on coins in important buildings. But the scripture tells us the most important reason in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. See, God said this will happen, and his words are true. The people waving the palm branches were expecting Jesus to be their king, to free them from the Roman government. But instead, Jesus came to free the people from penalty and punishment of sin. The people missed the main reason for which he came. Let's take a closer look at what else they missed by looking into the events leading up to the crucifixion, because they were evidence of Jesus' great suffering and immense love. Beginning in Mark 11, as Jesus and his disciples neared the city of Jerusalem, he gave two of them instructions for where and how to get a donkey for him to ride upon into the city. Just as Jesus said, they got the donkey and brought it to Jesus and put their coats on it. As Jesus rode through the city, others spread their coats in the road and others spread branches, which was typical for royalty. As we see in the picture, the people were shouting, praise him. They praised Jesus as the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let's fast forward toward the end of the same week after Jesus and his disciples celebrated a special Jewish feast called the Passover together, just like we see in this first picture. They went to a place named Gethsemane. Jesus went there to pray and God's will be done, just like we see in the picture closest to me. Sadly, the disciples with him could not watch or stay awake. And like in the third picture, it was there that Judas came along with the crowd carrying swords and clubs to betray Jesus. Judas had arranged with the Jewish religious leaders that he would kiss the one they were going to grab and arrest. And with that, Judas went to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The soldiers arrested Jesus and all of the disciples left him. The soldiers led Jesus away to a quick trial by the Jewish religious leaders. These were high priests and all the chief priests, elders, and scribes. As they judged Jesus, they brought false witnesses. Even they could not keep their lives consistent. It was not until Jesus answered the high priest when he asked, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? Was the fake trial over and they all condemned Jesus as he said, I am. Can you believe that someone even spit at him? They also beat them with their fists and slapped him. Let's take a look at this first picture. While this was going on, Peter was in the courtyard of the high priest. One of the servant girls accused Peter of being with Jesus. And that's exactly what Peter did. He said, I do not know who you're talking about. 
Once again, she told the others about her that he was one of Jesus' followers. But again, Peter denied it. Then, a little while later, the bystanders were saying to Peter, Surely you are one of his followers. You are a Galilean too. So this time, Peter swore, I do not know this man you're talking about. Immediately, a rooster crowed a second time, and Peter remembered how Jesus had said Peter would deny him three times before the rooster crowed twice, just like we see in this picture. Peter began to weep because he had denied Jesus. Fast forward to early in the morning as the Jewish religious leaders brought Jesus to a governing Roman official named Pilate. Of course, the chief priests began to falsely accuse Jesus, even though Jesus did not answer their lies against him. Pilate faced a decision. What was he going to do with Jesus? Pilate gave them a choice to release a murderer named Barabbas or Jesus, but they yelled out to release Barabbas. So, to satisfy the crowd of people, Pilate rejected Jesus. He released Barabbas, tormented Jesus, and then handed him over to be crucified. So guys, let's take a look at this top picture here. From there, the soldiers took Jesus and made fun of him and they twisted a crown of thorns and placed it on his head. Looking at the middle picture, the soldiers continued to beat him and they spit on him. They led Jesus to a place called Golgotha to crucify him. As Jesus could not carry the cross to a place any further, they grabbed someone from the crowd to carry it the rest of the way. In the lower picture, we'll see that when they arrived, the soldiers placed Jesus on the cross, nailed his hands and feet to the cross, as Jesus willingly died to take the punishment for our sin. We must never forget that although those people did all those unbearable things to Jesus, he chose to give his life on the cross. He had the power to stop it all, but Jesus chose to willingly die and take the punishment for my sin and yours. So what this means is that it was our sins that nailed Jesus to the cross because we have all sinned. Jesus is the reason for our faith because he made it possible to have our sins forgiven. He came to this earth and lived a perfect life to be the perfect sacrifice for our sins. The plan of salvation started and finished with Jesus. Without Jesus' death on the cross, you and I would not have our forgiveness of our sins in a right relationship with God now and for eternity in heaven. Even though it may be hard to look back at what Jesus went through, it is important to see the great price Jesus paid for our sins. So I challenge you to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's my lesson that I have for you today. Now I'm going to turn it over to Elder Thompson, who will bring us the Youth Ministry Lessons for the Team. See you next time. Good morning. I'm Elder Daryl Thompson from Spirit of God Christian Church. Happy to see everybody here. Well, you know what? I can't see you, but you can see me. So hope you guys are uh, having a wonderful Palm Sunday morning. We're going to try something a little different. We're going to add a Sunday school element this morning. So I need your participation. I need your energy. Parents, I really need you to make sure your kids are paying attention. So what are we going to do today? Well, it's not a traditional Sunday school class because when I teach, I like to have a lot of interaction. And unfortunately, because I don't have anybody here in front of me, I just need you to still make sure you participate. What are we going to learn and do today? Well, I'm going to try and do everything similar to what we would do in our classroom. So the very first thing that I always do is I pray. I will have my students stand up. So if you have brothers and sisters or if your parents are there with you, stand up, just take them by the hand and let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for watching out for us, keeping us safe during these unique times when we know you're in charge. Please bless our time together this morning as we learn and study your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Great. So that was almost the same. What would I do next? Of course, I would have each and every student tell me their name, what grade you're in, and then tell me a little bit either about something you're excited about for this coming week or something that you did this past week. Well, when you do that, I want you to share it with your family members today. Let them know something that really, really, really you're looking forward to or something that you did that was kind of exciting this past week. You may not have as much on your agenda as before since we are all staying nice and safe inside, but you can do still do a lot of fun activities. So hopefully you did something like that. What I always like to do next is start off our class with a fun exercise, a game. We've done brain teasers. We've done a game of charades where the students have to 
act out and guess what, what the word is. For this morning though, we're going to do a traditional hangman. So I have a nine letter word for you and you're gonna see it on your screen. So what I need you to do is try and guess and tell me what this nine letter word is. So this is where I need a little imagination. So I'm gonna imagine myself in front of you and you're just shouting out those letters. So are you ready to do this? Yeah. Great. So who has the first letter for me for this nine letter word? Oh, I heard somebody, they said T, T. Are there any T's? No, I'm sorry, there are no T's in this word. Oh, somebody said O. Uh, no, there are no O's in there. What else? S? Actually, there are two S's. Very good. And this one, there's an S at the very beginning of this word. Now, I said two S's. I made a mistake. It's only one S, and it's that S in the beginning. So, shout out some more words. Some more letters, I'm sorry. P? No, I'm sorry, there are no P's. E. E? Yes, we have one E. N. N. N? Yes, there is an N. C. C? Someone said C? I'm sorry, there are no C's. Someone said try some vowels. What's that? I? Yes, there actually is an I. Oh, you've got, a, got an idea? What about an F? What's that? F? Yes, there are two Fs. You think you might know what it is? I think I got it. Let's what try one more letter. Someone said G. Yes. So what do you think our word is? We need a U, and if we put that U in there, and a R, well, we spell suffering. And that's what we're going to study today, how Jesus, going to the cross, really went through some severe suffering, but he did so for our salvation suffering so we're going to study about jesus christ dying on the cross and right before he died what he went through with his disciples and how he had to suffer for our salvation we're going to be studying this lesson from the book of mark and we're going to take a look at chapter 14 and we're going to read verses 32 all the way through verse 65. Now, we're not gonna do it this morning right now. I'm just gonna kinda walk you through a little bit of what was going on in the story. But I need the parents to make sure you read this section with your children uh, before the end of the week so they will understand what's going on. Uh, ultimately, what we want all of our students to take away is this is a very important story. It's the story of what Jesus must have felt like right before he had to die on the cross. All of us experience suffering at some point in our lives, and there are a lot of different ways we experience that. Maybe not to the level and extreme that Jesus did, but we all need to know and be prepared that we might have to suffer something. When we were falsely accused of something we didn't do or mistreated for something, we have to be prepared, just like Jesus did, to go through those things for a bigger purpose. As we see in the story, Jesus had his disciples together, and they were all excited to be with him, but he told them that he was going to have to go away. The story in verse 32 starts in the Garden of Gethsemane. That's the garden where Jesus would go and get away to pray. And he took several of his disciples with him, Peter, James, and John. And he had asked them something. Could they just stay up and watch with him while he prayed? Jesus went away to pray and he talked to God, his Father, but you could tell something was different in this situation because the Bible tells us that as he was praying, he was sweating. He was sweating drops of blood. And that just signified how uncomfortable he was with what was about to happen. Jesus, just like us, has emotions and feelings, and he went through something that was very difficult. He asked God when he was praying that if he could just take away this cup, 
In other words, if there's some other thing I can do except for dying on this cross, I'll be happy to do it. But it's not what I want to do, God. It's what you want me to do. And that was the attitude that Jesus wants all of us to have. It's not the things that we want out of life, but it's really what he wants. And if he wants us to go through something difficult, sometimes we have to say, I'm willing to do that. As we read on in the story, we find out that Jesus got up from praying and his disciples, they fell asleep. That's like us sometimes. We're too tired from playing around to really go and read our Bibles and just do some simple things. But God asks us, can we just pray for a little while? Can he just watch over me for a little while? Let's not be like the disciples and be sleeping on a job. Of course, after he wakes up, one of the disciples who betrayed him, Judas, came in with the guards and the police and they arrested Jesus and they had a trial. You can read all about it in the remaining parts of chapter 14, but we know that ultimately this had to happen. Jesus could have easily have called down angels and said, I'm not going to do this or we're gonna do it a different way, but he didn't do it because it had to be done to, to actually uh, explain a prophecy. Now, we talked about this before, but a prophecy is when the prophets told us something that is going to happen in the future. And in the book of Isaiah, it predicted this exact same moment that Jesus would be put in front and on trial and then crucified on a cross. Jesus went through a lot of suffering. He was hit, he was whipped, he was spit on, talked about, but he did it for you and for me. And this Easter service and this Easter time, this is Palm Sunday, one week before, we need to remember the suffering that Jesus did on our behalf. I thank you guys so much just for listening in, and I hope that you enjoy this story and that you'll be able to tell the story to your friends. Again, we would like to thank you for being a part of this broadcast event. If this was a blessing to you, please remember to go to the Spirit of God Christian Church app or website and give online to support the work of the ministry. Also, please stay in prayer during these times. Have a blessed week.